Hi, I'm John DeVore. Welcome to the channel. Today is going to be a little different. Uh, a few videos ago, I did an unboxing video of the very first speakers I called the Gibbons. They're called the Gibbon Ones. And I mentioned in that video that I was really curious to measure them. And so I did. And I made a video of it. And this is the video. I didn't do a completely comprehensive set of measurements on them just for time and because I was trying to get video of the process. So what I did is I focused on doing gated SPL measurements. What the hell is that? SPL, sound pressure level. So it's essentially the frequency response of the speaker. SPL is the the sound pressure level. So when you see those graphs or when you see the, the bars on those meters, that's the level at which the sound pressure is where it's being measured, generally by a microphone. And gated means it's going to be what's called a quasi-anechoic measurement. An, a true anechoic measurement would have to be made either floating in space or it would have to be made in what's called an anechoic chamber. And that is a chamber that is very, very heavily treated on all of its surfaces, internal surfaces, all the walls, floor and ceiling, so that no sound waves can reflect, uh, bounce off of those boundaries and come back and reach the microphone. And that's a pretty elaborate thing. And most people don't have the space or the budget to create any kind of an anechoic chamber like that, <clears throat> including DeVore Fidelity. And as computer processing power became cheaper, these gated sweep measurement systems became much more affordable. A gated measurement is instead of simply having a big tone and a microphone picking up and, and telling you how loud that tone was, a sweep tone means that the tone is going from high to low frequencies or vice versa, low to high frequencies. And the microphone is capturing that sweep as it sweeps up the frequency response. When you use gating with that, that means that the microphone is only going to capture a very specific time window along that sweep. So the computer knows when it's generating that tone. So it knows when the speaker is going to transmit a specific frequency. And in the old days, you would tell the computer how far away the microphone was from the speaker. And then it would generate a, a time window that would essentially filter out any reflections on, from that frequency. So as the tone would sweep from low to high, it would be filtering out everything other than that sound traveling at the speed of sound from the loudspeaker that you're measuring into the microphone. And that would be a certain number of milliseconds based on how far away from the speaker the microphone is again. And you could configure that filter to essentially turn the microphone off before any reflections reached it. And that is, it's a brilliant way. It is, it is, it will essentially give you an anechoic measurement down to a certain frequency. And that frequency is going to be dictated by the difference in the time between that sound going directly from the speaker to the microphone and that sound going from the speaker to the nearest reflection point. Often that's going to be the floor to the microphone. So the farther away you can get your speaker from the boundaries, the longer you are going to have to be able to window out that frequency response. So what I did today with the Gibbon Ones is that I wasn't going to get too elaborate. I didn't do, I didn't bring the speaker out into the main room where we've got uh, 16 foot ceilings and, and a little bit more space to work with. I just did it in my office. Uh, I did raise it up on a platform. So we do have a pretty decent window and we got a real measured response down to below 500 Hertz. So we, so the response window that I, that I had 
that I created is from 500 hertz up to 40,000 hertz. Uh, I wanted to get a good ultrasonic picture of it because a, a later version of this tweeter became the tweeter in the Silverback reference, which was our big flagship speaker that I designed in 2003 and 2004, and it came out towards the end of 2004. So that was the scope of the measurements that I wanted to do today. So this little measurement is going to be done on that system, the Fine Sounds R&D system with Hardware 3 is what it's called. I have the calibrated graph measurement microphone that goes with the system and I run my measurements generally not from one meter. The only thing I find one meter distant measurements good for is finding out uh, the SPL sensitivity of a pair of speakers because the standardized sensitivity spec is measured at one meter. Uh, so I generally measure from over two meters away. I measure from seven feet away, 84 inches, which is much more of a normal listening distance. And I set up this measurement to listen from the tweeter axis, which is how I originally designed these speakers to be heard from back in 1996. So I got the old Gibbon ones down from the ar archive shelves put it on a, an old prototype 3XL, Gibbon 3XL stand, and then put that on a small platform to get it as far away from the floor as practically possible in here in, the, in my office. These, the, my office has a little bit over 10 foot ceilings, so that meant I could get the measurement center roughly five feet away from any boundary, which is what I did. I set up the measurement microphone, connected it to the Fine Sounds hardware, turned on the hardware, fired up Windows on my Mac, and ran a first sweep. Now I set up the software so that when it ran this sweep, you would be able to see the raw data that it first acquires. With Fine Sounds, it just takes in all the data, brings it in, and then you, afterwards, you can go in and adjust the parameters. So you can adjust the window that dictates the distance, the, the delay that dictates the distance, between the speaker and the microphone. So in our case, at 84 inches, that's somewhere around six and a half milliseconds. And then you can also dictate the moment that you want to close that window. And in, in our case, with the size room we have in the setup, uh, I used four milliseconds. So that basically cleans up all of the reflective information from our measurement, and that gives us our final result. So I did a printout of the final result that I think you just saw on the screen. So this printout shows us the response of the Gibbon 1 measured from 84 inches away at the tweeter axis. So up here, this is 40,000 hertz is the outside of the range here. And this here, I believe, is 700 hertz or something like that, maybe 800 uh, unfortunately, I'm looking at the back of this right now, but the response is actually not bad, uh, better than I was expecting. These speakers were designed 100% by ear, and the crossover was designed with a pencil and paper. So this, the, uh, the crossover range, the crossover frequency of this system is about 5K. Uh, which happens right around here. So you can see there's a little bit of a notch, a little cancellation there at the crossover range. But this is this here is uh, 20,000 hertz. So you can see that the tweeter has pretty good ultrasonic response, uh, which is why we developed it a little further into the Silverback reference speaker. Uh, and there's a little something going on here. So uh, really actually impressed, kind of um, better than I was expecting this to look like. When things start to get a little bit ugly is when we start to measure off axis. So that measurement is right from the listener having their ears in at the same height as the tweeter in that system. As soon as we start moving off axis, you start to see some stuff happen in that crossover region. So here is 
another set of sweeps and this we have that original white line that's the line that we that I just talked about and then we have three more lines here uh, ending with this really kind of ugly green line that has an enormous suck out a good 15 DB and pretty wide suck out at the crossover region so this is this is a speaker that sounds good uh, at the listening axis but will change its character quite a bit if you move off axis so if you're walking around standing up or if you're lying on a cushion on the ground you're not going to get the same sonic flavor that you do when you're sitting at the optimum axis now just to show you an example of a speaker that i'm working on right now this is uh this is the same measurement suite of uh, on axis and off axis from a project that I'm working on right now. It's a, so this is a prototype. These are sweeps from a prototype. I, I measured them from the same distance, the same heights, and uh, the same frequency range. So the top of this is gonna be 40,000 Hertz and the bottom of it is gonna be about 700 Hertz. So this one here, you can see, so this is about 20K. So there is a bit of an ultrasonic peak on there uh, and that is due to the shape of the horn in the prototype cabinet we're still working on that a little bit but uh, all the horn development right now has been to ensure we have in from 20k below uh, is as flat and the boost is as even-handed as possible and then uh, you can see down through the crossover range all of these lines are very tightly clustered. So the, the sonic flavor of this speaker is not going to change very much as you move on and off axis. And this is, uh, this is an example of sort of the middle of a current Devor Fidelity design, getting a little bit of a sneak peek here. And some of the stuff that we are able to now address now that we have better measurement facilities and uh, I certainly have a lot more design experience under my belt and so uh, I am designing to make sure that more people are getting an even response uh, from our designs. So that was a, sort of a whirlwind tour through the way some of the ways that we do measurements and and a little bit of what they mean. Thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video. Bye.